A key objective of front-end frameworks is the ability to have dynamic rendering of UI elements. A key form of dynamic rendering is conditional rendering, where something is either displayed or hidden based on a certain condition. Now I've seen some pretty silly mistakes when it comes to conditional rendering in React, so this lesson we will look at the core JavaScript principles that make conditional rendering possible and then establish a simple guidebook that covers the good and the bad practices for conditional rendering in React. So let's go. Before we can truly understand conditional rendering in React, we need to understand the concept of falsy values that exist within JavaScript. The complete list of falsy values consists of false, null, undefined, empty string, and the numbers zero and nan. What this means is that when they are used within a conditional block, they behave essentially the same as a false. And we can prove this by simply running this application. And you can see that because all of these conditions are not true, we do not see any console log statements. With this simple principle out of the way, let's jump into a React application. Now React has some special handling for these falsy values. For the value false, null, undefined and empty string, React essentially renders nothing and we can see that on the screen right now. However, for numeric values, which are zero and nan, React does actually render them out. And this is not something that is by mistake. This is actually a valid choice by the React creators so let's take a look at an example that demonstrates why the choice was made to always show numeric values, even though it might be zero. Consider the example of a very simple counter application that has the current count, has increment and decrement features for the count, and then we simply render out the plus and the minus buttons and the current count value. Now, because React actually chooses to render out the numeric zero, we don't have to do any special handling over here. The numeric display of the count transitions smoothly from zero to positive values. And then if we decrement the count, it transitions smoothly back down from positive to zero to negative values. Now that we understand that React hides falsy values other than the numeric ones, the next concept that we need to cover in order for conditional rendering to make sense is the JavaScript principle of end chaining. Consider the simple person variable, which contains an object that has a member name and then that member name is an object that contains the member first. Using the JavaScript boolean and end operator, if you create an end chain between person, person.name and person.name.first, JavaScript will keep evaluating the chain till it finds a falsy value, which in this case does not exist and therefore we end up with person.name.first, which of course is Jane. To further drive this point home, the JavaScript runtime first checks that person is truthy and yes it is, so it goes to person.name, which is also an object and truthy, and therefore it goes to person.name.first. However, if anything within the chain is falsy, then it is short-circuited to that falsy value. For example, if the person is null, the JavaScript runtime is going to see that as a falsy and will not execute any of the other AND operators. Now we can actually use AND chaining for displaying certain items. The objective here is that if all of the conditions are true, we eventually resolve to the final object and in case any of those conditions are false, we get back that falsy value. And as we know that React does not render most falsy values, so we can actually use this knowledge of falsy values and end chaining to do conditional rendering in React. As a basic demonstration, we utilize the useState hook to create a Boolean variable called isShown and then a utility function to toggle this between true and false. We create a button wired to this toggle function and then use AND chaining to conditionally render a piece of content. Now, when this application starts, we have is shown pointing to the value of false. And as we know, this particular AND chain will resolve to false. And as we also know, false is not something that is rendered by React. However, when we click the button to set the condition to true, this particular chain now resolves to the content, which of course React renders to the screen. And of course, we can click the button again to set the boolean to false, which of course results in the chain resolving to false, which of course does not get rendered to the screen. So chaining off of a boolean with an and is standard practice within React to conditionally render a piece of content. But in addition to booleans, it is also conventional to use null and undefined. So let's take a look at another example. Here we have a simple type representing a user object. If the user is loaded, it will be an object that contains the name property. Otherwise, it will be null. We have a state variable for a user within our application, which we initialize to null. We have a load function, which loads chain, and then we have a clear function, which sets it back to null. Within the UI, we have a button to load the user, as well as a button to clear the user. 
and then we can use our knowledge of conditional chaining to conditionally display a paragraph containing the user name. Now when user is null, this chain shortens to null and as we know React displays nothing. However, when we load the user, user becomes truthy and therefore it resolves to the paragraph containing user.name which of course we see on screen. And of course, if we set the user back to null, by example clicking the clear button, that paragraph tag goes away. Now this method of chaining off of a boolean, null and undefined is perfectly fine and conventional to do within React. However, it is not safe to do so with numeric values. So let's take a look at an example that demonstrates an issue that can happen if we do so. We are going to build a simple UI that displays a number of messages. We start with a single message, never gonna give you up. We create a utility to add a message which adds another message and remove a message which removes the last added message. Within the UI, we have two simple buttons, one wide to add message and one wide to remove message. And then we check if there are any messages using messages.length to conditionally render an unordered list of all of the messages. Now we started off with a list containing a single item and sure enough, we see an unordered list of that single message. And this does work as long as we have some messages and we can add as many as we want. But when we start to remove messages and we end up with zero messages, instead of not seeing any unordered list, we actually end up seeing the number zero. The reason of course is as we covered, it's a good thing that React renders numbers. So of course, as we see right now, it's a bad idea to use them for conditional chaining. Now one quick fix that we can do is to use the ternary operator to map the falsy value of a zero to the literal now. And now if messages.length is not zero, we get this unordered list. Otherwise we get null. And as we know, React will not render null. And with this simple change, we no longer get that ugly zero when there are no messages and removing all of the messages makes that list disappear. Now I'm not a fan of using the ternary operator for this particular purpose. And there are two key reasons why. The first reason is that this is verbose and not as elegant looking as and and. And then secondly, the intent that we are only conditionally rendering something is not very clear. It feels like an if else where the else condition is just now. So it's a bit misleading in its intent and I would much rather prefer an upfront presentation of the fact that it is a simple if and I don't have to dig down to find the else condition. Fortunately, it's very easy to conveniently use a conditional and and chaining with all falsy values by combining it with one more JavaScript concept. Now you might already be familiar with the fact that you can use the not operator to convert any falsy value to the literal true. And similarly, if you use the not operator on the literal true, it converts it to the literal false. What this means is that we can actually use the not operator twice on any of the falsy values and be guaranteed that they will turn to the literal false. Lucky for us, we know that React does not render the literal false. So if you want to use any of the falsy values for a conditional chain, all that we need to do to be guaranteed that it doesn't get rendered in the falsy case is to prefix it with not not. So for our particular use case, we simply prefix messages.length with not not and use our simple conditional chain. And we know that when it is going to be zero, it's not going to render anything. And when we do have messages, we get that unordered list. I'll wrap things up there as always. Thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.